Learning English can be a long, lonely journey. No matter how motivated you are, you will likely feel discouraged from time to time. And you might catch yourself thinking things like, what's the point? Why am I even doing this? So in this episode, I want to list some benefits that learning English can bring to your life because sometimes all you need is a gentle reminder to keep going. Hey everybody, how's it going? Thiago here and welcome to another episode of the podcast. In case you're new here, I've created this podcast and YouTube channel to help intermediate and advanced learners of English communicate with more confidence, more accuracy, more clarity, and more awareness. If this sounds like something you want for yourself and your English, subscribe to the channel here on YouTube. Help me get to 100,000 subscribers. That's my next big milestone I'm trying to achieve here with this channel. And also, if you are listening on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, follow the show so you don't miss a single new episode. Also, don't forget to check out my pronunciation course. This is a course I've created to help you learn the main sounds of the English language and the main connected speech patterns that you hear native speakers using in media, movies, TV shows, podcasts, and in real life if you happen to meet them. So this course will teach you to speak with more clarity, more flow, more fluency, and also will help you be able to better understand fast spoken English. If you want to learn more about the course and how you can buy it, the link is here in the description of the video on YouTube and also in the show notes if you are on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. So the first benefit that learning English can bring to your life is that it can change your brain for the better. It actually promotes the health of your brain. I have here uh, some conclusions that some research has suggested when it comes to being bilingual, and the health of your brain. Some research has suggested that being bilingual can bring benefits like higher density of the gray matter, which contains most of your brain's neurons and synapses. It can also help delay the onset of diseases like Alzheimer's and dementia by as much as five years. And it can bring major cognitive benefits to your brain, like improving executive function, problem solving, being able to switch between tasks seamlessly, improving your concentration, being able to filter out irrelevant information, all these things. So it's fair to say that being bilingual, learning a second language such as English can make your brain more healthy, complex, and actively engaged. So this is one benefit that learning English as a second language can bring to your life. Another benefit is you can make more money by learning English. Here in Brazil, there have been some studies that concluded that people who spoke English fluently here in Brazil earned up to 70% more than their monolingual counterparts. Now, if you're not from Brazil, check that information, check those statistics in your own country. But I would bet that the numbers are similar. At least it's fair to assume that, you know, if you live in a country where English is not spoken as a second language, and if you have very good fluent English, your chances of earning more money than your monolingual friends, much higher. But regardless of that, especially with the advent of the internet and remote work, now you can land work opportunities working for companies all over the world. All you got to do is have good English skills. And as a consequence, you can earn your salary in a foreign currency. I know that for many countries, being able to earn your salary in US dollars, in euro or in pounds is much better than earning your local currency. So that's another benefit that learning English can bring to your life. It can help you make more money. You also have access to more information. According to Statista, as of January 2024, more than 50% of the content online is in English. More than 50%. Some sources even say almost 60% of the content that we find online is in English. Just as a comparison, I looked up my native language, Brazilian Portuguese, only 3%. 3%. Of the content online is found in my native language. 
but almost 60% is found in English. And I have experienced this myself firsthand. Every time I try to search for a topic, first in my native language and then in English, I always find the English pages and the English content much richer and dense in terms of information than the information I find in my native language. So can you imagine the wealth of information you have access to simply because you know English? Think about the books that you can read and that maybe haven't been translated to your native language. Think about watching TED Talks in English, reading articles in English, listening to podcasts. And nowadays we have so many great podcasts that are fully in English. Can you think about the amount of information that you have access to nowadays just because of English? Would you be able to have the same access to the same kind of information if you only spoke your native language? Probably not. So that's another great benefit. Still talking about um, information and having access to it, I would also say having access to movies, TV shows, and music, and being able to enjoy these at a whole different level. I really believe that when you know English well, you enjoy your favorite movies, TV shows, and music at a whole different level. Talking about movies and series, for example, if you watch the original version in English, you get to truly enjoy the actor's performance. Sometimes when you watch a dubbed version, the person who is dubbing that actor is not doing justice to the performance, to the original performance. It's not as impactful. It's not as exciting as the original performance was. If you watch it in English straight away, you don't miss that. You get to enjoy the actor's performance as it was intended. I remembered uh, some comments that I've heard over the years of some people that I know in my uh, social circle who don't like sitcoms. You know, sitcoms are those um, situation comedy series, you know, like funny series like Friends, Two and a Half Men, The Big Bang Theory. These shows are sitcoms. Some people have told me in the past that they don't find these funny, but these people didn't know English. They didn't know English. So probably the reason why they didn't find these shows funny is because they didn't know the language. They maybe watched it uh, with subtitles in their native language or dubbed. So it's not going to be the same thing because when it comes to sitcoms, guys, most of the humor in sitcoms, in American sitcoms, even in British sitcoms, is in the language. You know, there's a lot of puns. Play with words, sarcasm, irony. It's all about the language. If you don't understand the language, you're not going to think that's funny. And then you're going to hear those laughing backtracks and go, why? This is not funny at all. Of course, you didn't understand the, the irony. You didn't understand the sarcasm. Okay? So that's another benefit to learning English. You got to enjoy movies, TV shows, and music at a whole different level. Finally, I would say that Knowing English allows you to talk to pretty much everybody in the world nowadays. When you travel, it won't be a problem for you to communicate and for you to meet new people. If you're looking to immigrate to an English-speaking country, learning English is a must, and that's another benefit that English can bring to your life. Maybe you want to move to an English-speaking country with your family because, you know, you want to live in a first-world country, you want to provide a better quality of life or welfare to your family, you know? And learning English well allows you to do just that. So you can successfully immigrate in that new country. You can successfully land a good job, good work opportunities, network there, okay? I know that many people immigrate without having a very high level of English, but I would say these people kind of struggle. They tend to struggle more because, you know, they don't communicate as well yet. But if you go and you immigrate with a good level of fluency already, it's much easier to pass a job interview, to get work, to network, you know? So it's another benefit. And of course, I mean, you got to learn about other cultures, other ways of viewing the world, 
of doing things, all that through English. So these are some benefits that I see that um, English learning can bring to your life. And at the end of the day, I would say that what matters is why you are learning English. If you haven't done this exercise yet, do this exercise. Set aside some time and think to yourself, why am I learning English? Why do I want to learn this language? What is my reason? Because it's important that you have a strong enough reason, a strong enough why you are learning the language. Because it is a midterm to long-term process and you will inevitably feel discouraged. But when you feel discouraged, thinking about why you started in the first place will give you the motivation and the grit to keep going, okay? And whenever we engage in something that is more midterm to long-term like this, guys, it's important that from time to time, we do a little check-in with ourselves, you know, and we remind ourselves of why we started doing that thing in the first place. It's very easy to lose track of that once you start uh, this journey, you know? So, Make sure you have a strong intrinsic motivation to learn this language. Maybe some of these reasons I listed today uh, are part of your why or reason for learning English. And maybe there are other reasons, other motivators there. So make sure you identify your motivators, your reasons. Make sure they are positive for you and for other people. And they are strong enough to drive you in this midterm to long-term journey. And that's all I have for today's episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, my main purpose with this episode today was to remind you of some of these things, because I'm sure that you know about all this stuff, but sometimes all we need is a reminder so that we can get back on track with our English studies and English practice. Don't forget to learn more about my pronunciation course. The link is here in the description of the video on YouTube and also in the show notes on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Subscribe to the channel, share the channel with friends and family so we can get to 100,000 subscribers faster. And thank you so much. I'm Thiago. I'm signing off. I'll be talking to you very soon in the upcoming video. Bye-bye.